Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming and everyone here on Zoom as well. Um, okay, we are, are going to resume uh, the end of um, Perak Aleph tonight. End of Perak Aleph tonight, part three. Um, we're going to try to move through Perak Bays, uh, and that will be our target to get somewhere toward the end of Perak Bays. Um, so we've uh, so far done part one, which was basically the background of them going to Moab, and then moved into part two, which was last week, which was um, Rus and Arpa returning with Naomi back to uh, Beis Lechem and um, that whole discussion between Rus and Naomi and then Arpa goes home. Okay, so we now uh, will pick up with Perak Aleph, Pasuk Yud Tes. Perak Aleph, Pasuk Yud Tes 19. So, Vatelachna um, Shtehem, the two of them are walking. Ad Bo'ana Beis Lechem until they reach base lechem. Vayihi, kivo'ana base lechem, and it is that when they arrive in base lechem, vatehom kol ha'ir alehem, the entire city vatehom is like a muhuma, is like, um, they are like in an uproar, so to speak. Vatehom kol ha'ir alehem, and everyone is, is talking about them. There's like a big bustle, we'd say, you know. Vatehom arna hazos nami, and they are saying, is this really nami? Could that, could that really be her? Is that possible? So the Medrash says, they're looking at her and they're saying, you know, here's this woman who was once one of the most important parts of our society and our community. And they know that she disappeared. And here she is again, and it looks like her. But, you know, the Medrash says, you know, she used to wear this fancy clothing and now she's dressed in rags. And, you know, she, she is, that, is that really her? Vatomer Alehen. And um, Naomi says to, uh, to the people talking, now it doesn't say they're, they're talking to her, right? They're not necessarily talking to her. It sounds like that's like the word, like they're talking to each other and saying like, like look over there, is, is it, could that really she be knew, her? She knew they were talking about so she knows they're talking about Tomar Alayans and she chimes in and she says, I'll Naomi, do not call me Naomi. Now the word Naomi here means pleasant, pleasant or sweet. So she says, don't call me Naomi, Kerenali Mara, call me bitter. Ki heimar shadai li mode, because Hashem has done bitter things to me very much. Okay, let's do one or two more, uh, one more pasuk and then we'll, yeah. Oh, what is that? Unbelievable. Was she a prophet? What did you say? Was she, was she, was she a prophet? That's a good question. Um, it does not seem to be um, anywhere in the book that she is communicating uh, with Hashem, or that, or that, that, that that Hashem is communicating with her. Um, does anyone know otherwise? I don't know. She can. I don't, she I mean, was not. On, I, she was not on some crazy, some crazy level or anything. Yeah. The question here for the people on Zoom. The question was: Was Naomi a Nivia? Was she a prophetess? I'm, I'm not aware of that, but um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be anywhere in the in the safer that Hashem is communicating with her. So I don't know. She's just regular. regular it seems like yeah, holy, but not necessarily a prophet. So one more pasuk, and then we're going to explain the three of them together. So pasuk chaf aleph at the end of parak aleph, chaf aleph. Ani milea halachti. I left this town. I was full. The reikam hashivani Hashem, and Hashem has now brought me back, and I'm empty. Lama tikren alina ami. Why are you calling me sweet? Vaadonai anavi. Hashem has, so to speak, like like um, spoken out against me, or he has testified against me. Vishadai heirali. And he has caused this bad thing to happen to me. Was she was she trying to, to help? Like you know, like, like like basically she in a way she knew she did the wrong thing, they left, they didn't give Sadaka, they didn't. So was she trying to help to help people and say, hey, this is what happened, you know, this is what happens to you if you go against Okay, good. That's an excellent way of looking at it. The question for the people on Zoom, the question was, is she, is she trying to like give them like Musar almost, like trying to, to guide them and tell them like, this is what you should do because look what happened to me. So that's a possibility. It could be that. Um, it could be that she is, which we're going to see in a moment. It's also possible she's acknowledging, like now she's acknowledging, now I realize I made these decisions and now looking back on it, I see the way things unfolded and it, how what Hashem brought my way. And maybe now I can put the pieces together and see why this has all happened. So it could be maybe maybe she is like trying to teach them something. It could be she's just publicly acknowledging what what has happened to her, and like accepting that, so to speak. 
So just to go back for a moment um, to, to look at these three, three psukim together. So what, what is this that the whole city is together, right? Everyone in the city is there and everyone's saying like, oh, what's, what's going on? So, so why, 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 why is everybody here? So um, the, the Gemara tells us um, two possibilities. Um, one of them is not as exciting. One of them is maybe a little bit more exciting. One, one of them, the Gemara says, is that everyone is there because this is harvesting of the Omer. They're harvest, it's, it's Nisan. And they are going out and there's this big um, public gathering and celebration when they would harvest the barley to be offered as the carbon Omer. So that's why everyone's gathered there and it's like a public scene. So that's one possibility. Rashi quotes the Gemara that says there's another possibility. And the Gemara says here, um, the, other, the other option for why everyone's gathered there is because it is the funeral of the wife of Boaz. Now we haven't even mentioned Boaz yet, so it's kind of like a spoiler, but, but um, it's, we're gonna get to him in a few seconds. Where, where is that? That, 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 that's not, that's in Rashi? Yeah, so Rashi says on this Pasuk, he's quoting from the Gemara, and the Gemara is picking up on the fact that there seems to be like a public gathering here. Oh. Now to add to this, so let's, we'll, 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 we will fast forward. In a moment, we're gonna introduce Boaz. And it's interesting because it seems to be that there's this public gathering and people are talking about her, but there's one person who's not noticing her, who's not there, and that is Boaz. And he seems to be the key figure, right? He's gonna step in in a moment and be introduced. And now the rest of the story is centered around Ruth and Boaz. So, so presumably the Gemara is like trying to put that together. Like there's this big thing going on in the city and everyone knows about that they're returning and Boaz seems to be absent. So either he's unimportant or there's some reason why he's not there, but he does seem to be important. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get to that today. It seems like the, it doesn't say in the Pesukim explicitly, but it makes some references that imply that it's a few months. Yes. Yeah, so Bo, Boaz is here. He's in Beis Lechem, and he, but he's not mentioned here So, so at this point. So the Gemara says, what's happening is, this is Boaz, it's the funeral of Boaz's wife. Now, again, one the, the, the thing why that makes it kind of interesting is what, what's going on here on a deeper level, right? Boaz's wife is passing away, and now who is stepping into the scene? So into, into the picture is Rus and Nami, right? Rus is coming in, yeah. Uh, that's a good point. I wondered that, and I don't know the answer to that. Why, why can you, why, why? Right, the question is why, it, it doesn't necessarily, why do we care that his wife passed away and now Rus steps into the picture? He's allowed to marry two people, but, but right? If he's married to his wife and Rus comes in, he can choose to marry Rus, and that would that would be fine. What if he was an outlaw that he can't have kids? That was done in the like a, around a thousand years ago by someone named Rabbeinu Gershom, a little shortly before Rashi. He outlawed polygamy, but before that, it was totally fine. So that's a good question. I don't know what what the answer to that that would be. Um, yeah, especially if he was if he was marrying her just like to perpetuate, you know, to do like an act of chesed. All, all, all the more so, perhaps he would have done it even had he. I mean, if his only goal was to 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 do a kind act, so then, you know, he may have still done that even if if he was married. So I'm not exactly sure uh, why that has to be. I don't know the answer to that. Um, okay, so um, yeah. Now, so what does Nami say? So it's interesting. Nami says, "Don't call me Nami. Don't call me Nami. Why? I'm not sweet, right? I'm not sweet. Things are things are really terrible for me." So there's an interesting point here. Um, Rev, Rev Yitzchak Velazhener, who is the, the son, he was the son of Rav Chaim Velazhener. Rav Chaim Velazhener was the famous student of the Vilna Gaon. And Rav Chaim Velazhener had a son, Rav Yitzchak Velazhener. So he points out here, he says an interesting, he, he makes a pretty straightforward observation. He says, it's interesting. They're telling her, they're saying, can this really be her? She was so wealthy before, now look at her, right? So she says, don't call me Nami. My life is ruined. So, so what's what's the back and forth there? That's exactly what they're telling her. They, they're they're all astonished and they're saying that doesn't really you don't really seem to add up to the way you you used to be. They're saying you look miserable, right? So she says, "Don't call me Nami." That's exactly what what they're saying. So he says a really uh, 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 what I thought was a was a nice insight. He says that what Nami is telling them is Nami is saying, you know. You're saying that I was Naomi. I was never Naomi. I was never sweet. Why? She says the quote, she says, Ani Milea Halachti. I left when I was full. 
Vereikam Hashivani Hashem, and I have returned and I'm empty. So he says, on a deeper meaning, he says, she's saying, I left when I was full, meaning my fullness, all the wealth and everything I had, right? Halachti, that pushed me away from God. Vereikam Hashivani Hashem. And the fact that I now have nothing, that is what brought me back. So I thought, you, you, you all think that I had a life of Naomi that was pleasant and sweet, but it's not that I was that and now Hamar. I realized the whole time I was bitter. It may have looked like I was living the life, but all the, the thing that, that you all think made it for me, that really was the source of my bitterness because that's what sent me away. And that's what started all the problems in my life. And that's, and, and, and here, what, what brought me back? The fact that I'm Rekam, I have nothing, now I'm back. And God has brought me back to, to start this new chapter. Okay, so Pasuk Hafez, Batash of Naomi. So, um, okay, Naomi uh, returns, Vrus HaMoabiyah Kala Sa'ima, Rus her daughter-in-law, they return, Hashava Miste Moab, they have returned from the fields of Moab, Vehema Bo Beis Lechem, and they arrive in Beis Lechem, Betechilas Kitsir Seorim, at the beginning of the barley harvest time, which we know is usually around Nisan, that's why you have the concept of the carbon Omer, which is brought on the second day of Pesach. Okay, so we're now going to begin Perak Beis and introduce Boaz. Ula Naomi Moda Isha. Naomi has a relative. Moda is a relative. Moda, Rashi says a relative. Moda Isha, a relative of her husband. Ish Gibor Chayel. He was an important person. Mi Mishpachas Elimelech, from the family of Elimelech. Ushimo Boaz, and his name was Boaz. So I want to make two points here, just to put things into context. First of all, who was Boaz and how is he related? So number one, um, Rashi tells us, based on the Gemara, that um, Elimelech had at least two brothers. We're going to focus on two of them for now because that's what's important. Um, so there was Elimelech, and there was this person we're going to see later on, Ploni Almoni. And the, the third brother is someone named Salmon. So you have Elimelech, Ploni Almoni, and someone named Salmon. Okay? Elimelech is now dead. Elimelech is the one who married Naomi, they had Machlon and Kilion, Elimelech dies, okay? His other brother, Salmon, one of the brothers, Salmon has a son. Salmon's son is named Boaz. Am I good so far? Yeah, Salma. Okay, good. So this, okay, in the, in the back, they, they, it, says, it says Salma, sometimes it's Salma, sometimes it's written as Salmon. I don't know why that changed, but you see, you do see them, okay? Um, so Salmon does not seem to be alive at this point. Salma or Salmon does not seem to be alive. So you have Elimela, Ploni Almoni, and this person Salma or Salmon. And Salmon's son is Boaz. Is Ploni Almoni is one of Boaz's brothers, or he's an uncle? He's an uncle, right? Th three three brothers, brother. correct. You have Elimela, correct. So you have Ploni Almoni, Elimela, and Salmon. Elimela has passed away. Salmon seems to be nowhere in the picture. And now Boaz is Salmon's son. Right, so Elimelech. Correct, we'll get to that, but yeah, okay. So that is who Boaz is and how he's related here. Now, there's another important point here, um, which is not so, it's not clear, so I'm, but I'll just, I don't have an answer to it. I'll just share some of the, the issues behind this. Um, this point in identifying who Boaz is um, touches on a question, which is really unresolved and no one, no one seems to know the answer to, which is when did the story of Rus take, take place? When does this safer happen? When, when, historically, yeah. Did it happen in the times, uh, right? I mean, we know that Rus was the great grandmother of David Hamel. So it happened sometime before that. Did it happen in the times of Yoshua? Did it happen, like, where, where at what point did, did it happen? Okay, once, so you're saying you know, Boaz was one of the Anshikness. Okay, good. So, so someone's saying here, if we know that Boaz is part of the Anshay Knesset Agadola, so maybe we can somehow make a time assumption based on that. Yeah, are you going to say something? Yeah, okay, good. Good. So if you look at the beginning of the Sefer, we didn't talk about it when we started, I figured I'll save it till now. The first Pasuk of Sefer Rus begins, shafot hashoftim. It was during the times of the Shoftim. Okay? So Shoftim is the second book of Navi, Yehoshua, and then Shoftim. Now, that's somewhat helpful, but not really, because the book of Shoftim spans around 350, 370 years. <laughs> so it's not really helpful to say, it happened in the times of the Shoftim. Thank you very much. You know, it, it could be anywhere in that 350-year time. Okay, good. So this is going to make... 
Good. This is going to make even more problems for us. Okay. We, good. Okay. So let's. I, I don't have it. I don't have this on paper, but we're going to try to do this slowly. We're going to try to do the math here that Sui's pointing out in Ari. Okay. So Ari's pointing out. We know at the end of the sefer it says that Nachshon ben Aminadav is the um, is a grandfather of Boaz, right? Nachshon ben Aminadav has these three children: Eli Melech and Solomon and Ploni Almoni. Okay, now who is Nachshon ben Aminadav? We know that Nachshon ben Aminadav was the person who jumped into the sea. Okay, so here's someone who's jumping into the sea. He's a grandfather, and he's a, he's a grandfather, right? His child is Eli Melech. Okay, so now let's let's we'll do the math together. Okay, so let's we're gonna have to try to figure this out, right? So we've got forty years of the Jews in the desert. Nachshon jumps into the sea, and now we've got 40 years subsequent to that where the Jews are in the desert, okay? Then once they go into Israel, we have 28 years of Sefer Yehoshua. The Torah tells, the Nabi says, Sefer Yehoshua is 28 years. So how many years, by the end of Sefer Yehoshua, how far are we away from the splitting of the sea? 68 years. 40 years in the desert, 28 years of Sefer Yehoshua. We are now at the point of the beginning of Sefer Shoftim. Okay, so that wouldn't be crazy at this point. Maybe it happens right there at the beginning of Sefer Shoftim. That, that, that could be 68 years after Nachman jumped in. So, um, you know, that wouldn't be crazy if Nachman had, had a kid late. I mean, it, we might be able to work out so far. Now, he, he, here's the problem. Oh, yeah. No, the uh, Shoftim starts 28 years after they get into Israel, approximately. That's 14 years of fighting and 14 years of settlement? Correct. So they're settled already. Like them being a city is not great. Correct, right, right. I mean, that's all done. Yehoshua has died. We've moved on. And the truth is it might even be more than 28 years because right. Yehoshua takes 28 years. I don't know if there's time between then and the, you know. Okay, so we're at 68 years. So here's problem number one. You following, Michael, so far? Yes. We're good. Okay, fine. All right. I want to ask me to... I'm not going to ask you to repeat it. I just want to make sure. Okay. So now here's problem number one. So I thought someone was, I thought Sue was going to ask this or someone's going to point this out. The um, Ari said, maybe Boaz is one of the Shoftim. So we're not going to go through Sefer Shoftim. Now, I, I apologize. I didn't make a list of, of um, Sefer Shoftim. Oh, excellent. Okay. So someone on the Zoom is writing in the next part. Excellent. Um, isn't there an opinion that Boaz was Ivtsan? So we have two things coming in on, on Zoom. Uh, we'll get to that one. The first question is, is did Shmuel Hanabi write Sefer Rus? So Shmuel Hanavi did write Sefer Rus. Okay, so that's an excellent question from Stephanie. Stephanie says, didn't Shmuel Hanavi write Sefer Rus? So what does that tell us? That only tells us that what? That he knew about it. We don't necessarily know when it occurred. It doesn't mean it occurred in his lifetime. It just means that it couldn't have happened after Shmuel Hanavi. So that is helpful in narrowing it down. We know it happened sometime in the Shoftim period and not after Shmuel Hanavi. Okay, so now... Um, um, Basi Meth on the, on, the, on the Zoom pointed out the following. She says there's an opinion, and it's based on the Gemara. The Gemara says Boaz is the same person as someone else named Ivtsan. Ivtsan. Aleph Beis Tzadi Nun. Ivtsan. Who is Ivtsan? Ivtsan is one of the less famous Shoftim. Okay, so now let's see if you can do the math with me and we'll see where we get stuck. Okay, Boaz is the same person as Ibsen. They're the same person, two different names, probably describing two different qualities and periods of his life. Okay, so Svi's working it out there in Shoftim. We're gonna, I'm gonna try to jump ahead and, and, and work on this, okay? The first, the, the, the first three Shoftim, okay? Shofet number one, okay? His name is Asniel ben Kanaz. Asniel rules for 40 years, okay? Following Asniel ben Kanaz, we have someone, a Shofet named Ehud ben Geira. Ehud is 80 years. So how many years are we up to? 120. Okay. After that, we have the Shofetes Devora. So now we have another 40 years. So we're up to 160. Okay. We're already 160 years into the period of the Shoftim, and we haven't got to Ifsan yet. Okay. Going further, then we have a short stint of someone named Davi Melach and another person named Tola. And you add it up basically another few more years, and you're up to about around 50 years, another four Shoftim, and a total of approximately 50 years. 
So we're at how many years into Sefer Shofet? 210. 210. And we then arrive at our Shofet that we're looking for, which is Ibtsan. So here we have the Chachamim and the Gemara tell us Ibtsan is Boaz. And Boaz is not mentioned in Sefer Shofet, but Ibtsan is. And Ibtsan is pinned at 210 years into Sefer Shofet. Now that's going to get very tricky. Ibtsan is 210 years into Sefer Shoftim, and Ibtsan is Boaz, and he's a grandson of Nachshon ben Aminadav. So you got 210 years, and then you got to tack on another 68. That's like almost 300 years. Maybe there was another, maybe there was a grandson or a great-grandson. With the same, that, with the same name or something? Yeah. Okay, so I, I just was saying, meaning that there's a prop, meaning it, it's going to get a little bit difficult. Someone's going to have to have lived very long. And so, so, Please. Two what? In terms of years or two hundred? No, it's like the year. The year two seven one zero. Yeah. So what time was one was the basement day? What year? Oh gosh, I. Nineteen ninety four. Oh, um, I, I, I don't even know. I mean, David Amelech was approximately around twenty four. Oh, you're uh, you're talking about English years. I'm talking. I'm I'm thinking English years. You're doing Hebrew. Yeah. I, I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. I don't know. He's gonna okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you have the Hebrew year? I mean, the English year is like tw- it's like twenty four hundred BCE, approximately twenty five hundred for the first base of Oh, sorry, BCE. Okay, fine. Nine fifty. Uh, okay. Like Yes, I'm not sure how that would, but but we meaning we have a problem here. Meaning, okay, so so if Boaz is Ibtsan, he's like almost 210 years into Sefer Shoftim. Now, there's one other detail which I'll point out that many of you know because we brought it up before, which which adds another twist to this, which is it doesn't tell us in the in the in the book, but it Chazal tell us that who is Rus the daughter of? Rus is the daughter of a famous Moab king. His name is Eglon. So what does that do for us? Well, if you look in Sefer Shoftim, Eglon appears at the very beginning of Sefer Shoftim, right? And not only does he appear there, he is actually murdered there. So Eglon is murdered in like the second or third, in like the third parak of Sefer Shoftim, okay? So 40 years goes into Sefer Shoftim, and then we, and then, and then there's somewhere shortly thereafter, we've got the murder of Eglon. So Rus is his daughter. So that's going to put fr- from Eglon down to Ibtsan is like 150 years. You see the problem. So, so now when Rus met Boaz, she was 150 years old, like something's off here. So meaning essentially we, we, we have two basic conflicting reports in Chazal. One report in Chazal is, is that Rus is the daughter of Eglon which would pin the story towards the beginning of Sefer Shoftim. The flip side, as we heard from some people in here, is that Boaz is Ibtsan, which puts it like 200 years into Sefer Shoftim. So it's going to be hard to reconcile both of those. You either can say they're just two different opinions, we don't know what the story is, um, or alternatively, it doesn't re- re- mean really that she's the daughter of Moab, it could just mean she's the grandchild, descendant of Eglon, but not the direct daughter. So, okay, just to put that in perspective, um, and share those are some of the issues that the that Chazal are trying to 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 you know deal with and 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 untangle. Presumably, the fact that we don't know when it is means I would guess that Chazal feel that it's not important for the point of the story, which is why we don't know. But those are some of the issues behind it. Okay, speak. I go on or yeah. Okay, fine. I don't know. I don't want to hold you up, but okay. So fine. So now we have pasuk base, parak base, pasuk base. Vatomer Rus Ami. So Rus says to Naomi. I am going to go in the field and I will collect um, the, the um, stalks of wheat. I'm going to follow behind someone whom I find favor with, who, who looks like they'll be nice to me. And Naomi says to Rus, you should go and do that. Okay. And Rus goes and she starts collecting in the field. Following the people who are harvesting. So there is a halacha in the Torah. It's actually in this week's parsha in Kedoshim. There's a mitzvah called leket. 
right? So leket is, is that when the harvesters are taking the sickle and they're chopping down the grain, so they hold the grain like a handful and they chop it, if there's any grain that falls as they chop with the sickle, that grain gets to be, has to be left for the poor. Now it's interesting, that halacha, the Torah tells us, that grain that is left for the poor specifically has to be only two stalks. Two stalks are left for the poor. If it's um, more than two stalks, the owner can, the harvester can pick it up and, and go with it. So we're talking about not such great gain for the poor here. And you'll see why that's important coming up soon. So she's walking behind the coats room, behind the harvesters, middle of Pasigimel, Vayikar Mikreha. Mikre is like coincidence. Ha, whoa, it just so happens to be, right? Chelkas hasade leboaz, right? Wow. So look what happens to me that she ends up in the portion of the field of Boaz, Ashirmi Mishpachas Elimelech, who is from the family of Elimelech. So it sounds like she's not intentionally going there. And obviously, Mikre and being an accident, again, in our belief, doesn't mean that it's a complete accident, it means Hashem arranged it that this happens. But from her point of view, this is accidental. This is just not something that she's planning. Pasuk Dalet, Vihine Boaz, Bami Beis Lechem. Boaz is coming back from Beis Lechem. Vayomer Lakotsurim. Adonai imachem. He says to the Kotsrim, his way of saying hello, he says, God should be with you. And they respond to him, blessed should be, you should be blessed in the name of God. Um, the Mishnah in Masechah's Brachos tells us that, that um, this is one of the sources, or this is an example, it's not clear whether he instituted it or whether it happened before him, but the idea that when you greet someone, you mention the name of Hashem. So Boaz says, Hashem, Imachem, and they respond, Yivarechacha Hashem. We do a similar concept, right? We say the name of Shalom. Shalom, we say, is the name of Hashem. Shalom Aleichem, okay? Um, and we respond, what? Aleichem, Shalom, right? Similar idea that comes from here. Vayomer Boaz Lenaro, Pasuk So Boaz says to one of his people who's there, Hanitza Balakotrim, to the guy who's standing around, Lemi Hanaara Hazos, who is this woman? Now, why is he asking who the woman is? So there's a few possibilities. The Ibn Ezra says he's asking because he just doesn't recognize her because she's dressed like a foreigner. She's dressed like a Moabite, so she doesn't dress like the people in that locale. So he says, like, she, I've never seen someone like that before. Who, who on earth is she? The Gemara says that he's asking because there's something that's catching his attention. He doesn't know who she is. He doesn't know that she's related, seemingly, at this point. And he's asking who is she because the Gemara says the way that she is collecting she is collecting bederich snilus. She was collecting in a very modest way. The way she was bending down, she made sure that it didn't. Uh, it, it, it was like very tsanua, um, and therefore he was very impressed by that, and that caught his attention. And he said, "Who, who is this person?" Pasuk bav vayan hanaar hanitza bal hakotzerim vayomar. So the person who is uh, overseeing the harvesters says to Boaz, "Naara moaviyahi. She is from Moav." Hashava im Naami Miste Moav. She is returned with Naami from the fields of Moav. So he points out, he says, Oh, that's that Moavite woman who came back. Now it's not clear. Some of the Mephorshim say it could be that he is criticizing her, and it could be that he's praising her. Right? He says, She is the Moavite woman. So why is he calling her the Moavite woman? So it could be he's saying, like, don't get so excited over her. She's that despised Moabite woman. We're supposed to keep ourselves away from her. Possible that he's saying that. It's also possible he's saying she is the Moabite woman. She's from Moab. And, and look what she, she, despite the fact that she is from Moab, look how she's behaving. So still not, not clear what kind of picture Boaz is getting of her. We don't know if the overseer said that. Right? Correct. The overseer says she's from Moab. That's all he says. We don't know. I'm just pointing out, it's not clear what he means by that, right? If he's intending to like... Um, Put, put her down or, or, or to look at her in a positive way. Pasuk Zayin, Vatomer. And now the overseer is, is explaining um, what Rus was doing. Vatomer, and she said, I will go and I will collect the bundles following the harvesters. And she came here and she was here from the morning until now. And she took a small break in the house. You know, she stopped for a little bit. But basically, she's been working hard the whole day. So she's a small white woman, and she's really committed to making sure that she gets all this wheat. Pasuk Ches. Vayomer. Vayomer Boaz al-Rus. Boaz says to Rus. Halo shamat biti. 
I have heard about you, my daughter. And he says, don't, don't go collect stuff in anyone else's field. Don't pass on from here. The ko sidbakin imna arosai. I want you to stay here and stay with the women who are here. And you'll stay in my field and you'll collect from there. Pasuk tes. Enayich basada asher yik tsorun. Enayich, keep your eyes. Basada asher yik tsorun. In the field, on this field where they're working. Veholach dacherehen. And you will follow them. Halot si visi as hane arim levulti nagech. I told the other men around not, not to touch you, not to bother you. So either it just means not to bother, maybe not to assault you. Vitsamis, if you're thirsty. Veholach del hakelim. Go over to the, to, to, to the buckets we have there, Vishasis, and get some drink, something to drink. Ma'ashir yishavun ha'ne'arim. From what they will, from the water that they will bring. Vatipol al paneha. And Rus falls on her face. Vatishtachu artza. And this is a way of like thanking Boaz. Vatomer love. And she says, Madu'a matza sichein ve'enecha. Why have I found favor in your eyes? La hakireni. That you have chosen to recognize me. Ve'anochi nochri'a. I am just a foreigner. So the Mephorshim point out something here, which is somewhat glaring, which is that, you know, Boaz finds out now that they're related. So does he respond in a way which is positive or not? Well, he does tell her, you know, it's all yours. Stay, stick around. I'll get, you know. It's like America. It's like America. <laughs> but what doesn't he do? Right? He says you can, you can take, take everything you want. Go collect all the stuff you want. Okay, that's a good point, right? It sounds like it's the Wild West. Like he's saying, like you know, don't worry, I got you covered. Yeah, he, he's like, don't, don't, you know, like, like, like somebody's visiting here, I found, or don't go to Right, exactly. Okay. Right. So, 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 so the thing is, though, so, so it's interesting, right? So it's the Wild West. Right? So he says, stay here, and 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 I got you covered. I'll I'll, I'll protect you. Yeah. Right. Right, meaning, meaning, if, right? So he's like, oh, it's 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 really dangerous here, and 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 then just go work. So the question is, why is he making her work, right? If he's this important person, and now he knows a moment, may, may, maybe he did, right? Either he he didn't know that they came back, maybe because his wife passed away. So we already dealt with that issue. Okay, fine. But now he does know. Now it's clear. He knows they're in town. He knows Naomi has come back. Okay, and he, and he's he's heard about it. So like. Where, where's the help? Like, like, I mean, open, you know, I don't know, invite him to your house or something. Like, what's going on? He just, you know, and he's just making her work for it. It's a little bit odd. Maybe she wouldn't want charity. Maybe, uh... Excellent. That's, that's an excellent point that Rob is making. So many of the Mepharshim point that out, which I think is a very important lesson, right? Is that some people say that, you know, it's one thing, you know, part of taking care of the people who, 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 who need it is providing for their needs. And there's another aspect, which is being sensitive to their dignity as well, right? So that some of the Mephorshim say the idea is that he, he feels like perhaps just giving as a freebie is going to make her feel like, you know, um, she's very needy, you know, perhaps. And that her Nami might feel like that. Uh, similar to like the Rambam says, right? The Rambam says the highest level of charity, the highest level of tzedakah is to do what? To give someone a job, right? So what? Why is that, right? So it's it, you know it's kind of like right, you know, give someone a fish, feed them for a day, teach someone to fish, you feed them for life, a, and 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 also you you give them you you are not just providing for them, for their for their physical needs, but what are you doing? You're 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 giving them a a a means of like feeling good about themselves, right? You're you're doing more than that as well. You're not just you know giving them financial security. You're also building them up. Now they work, they feel good, they're earning. So that's a possibility, right? It could be that he wants he, he wants her to feel like she's not just being given, you know, from the soup kitchen. Um, that's a possibility. Another possibility is we, we don't know what his feelings about the whole Nami situation are. He could feel that, you know, well, they deserve it. They deserve it. They had a coming to them. I mean, she left us all high and dry. You know, I stuck it out. He was there. And, uh, you know, they were an important family and they left. So, so we don't know. I mean, I mean, Boaz doesn't say anything. We don't know how he really feels about her. But the fact that this is his response, um, it, it's not clear whether he feels like they're, they, they deserve this and, and therefore they need to go through this, perhaps some kind of like Onesh, like it, it's coming to them from Hashem, or whether there's really some, you know, positive, you know, feelings toward this that he's like, I'm trying, the biggest favor I can do for her 
is to have her get something in a way that that still you know uh, cares and supports and, and is careful for her dignity. Okay, so a few more psukim and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Pasuk Yud Aleph. Um, okay, now, no, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll point out um, um, Mrs. Berger's question, by the way, um, is according to some alluded to in, in this Pasuk here, in Pasuk Yud, right? Rus says, the, the simple reading of the Pasukim is, Rus says, I'm so thankful that you gave me all these things, right? And she says, ah, you, you've chosen to recognize me, and I'm a far, I'm only a foreigner, and, you, and yet you're going out of your way to supply all these good things for me. Um, so Rabbi Yoshua Bakrach, who wrote a sefer, um, he, he wrote a sefer called Ima Shal Malchus, which is a sefer on, on Megillus Rus. So he suggests that Rus is, is kind of in a backhand way criticizing Boaz. She's saying, right, oh, it's so kind of you. You've, you've provided for me. I'm a foreigner, meaning I'm being treated like a foreigner. You're telling me that we're really, that I'm coming from Nami and that you're so impressed and, and so on and so forth. Well, then why are we, why are we living, you know, in a broken down hut with nothing to eat and, and, and no, you know, and nothing? Like, where's the family relationship here? Anochi nochriya. You're treating me like a nochriya. You're, you're ostracizing me, from, you're not ostracizing, but like kind of secluded, you know, keeping me out of the family. Vayan boaz vayomerlo. So boaz says, Hugeid hugad li. I was told. Kol asher asises chamoseich. I, have to, I was told everything that you did for your mother-in-law, after your husband died. And you left, your father and your mother, and the land that you were born in. And you came to this land that you did not know about, um, meaning that you, you, you had no idea, it seemingly means like you had no idea about, you know, from before, Yesterday, meaning that that was that was foreign to you. Yishalem Adonai Paolech, God should repay the work that you've done. Utihi maskortech shlema, and your reward should be full and complete. Meim Adonai Elohei Israel from God. Asher baas lachasos tachas knaflav, that you have come to kind of take refuge and security under His wings, so to speak. A few more pesukim, pasuk Yud Gimel. Batomer and Rus says, Em tochein be'enach Adonai kini chamtani. Right. I hope that I find favor in your eyes. Kini Khamtani, you have comforted me. You have you have made me feel good now that I can, you know, have something to eat. You have you have spoken on my heart. It means like I think you've you've spoke, you've said things which make me feel good and resonate with me. I, I am not really even at the level of one of your maidservants. Like you don't know me from really, I mean, now you know that I'm really a tenant, not me, but I just showed up today and you're being very gracious to me. And really, I you know, I don't even Really, I don't get on the radar, and 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 here and and here I am, and you're being kind. Vayomer la Boaz, and Boaz says, "Look, laes haocha when it's time to eat, goshi halom, come here. Vaochalt min halechem, you should eat bread. V'tavalt pitech b'chometz, and you can dip. I think pas is also bread, but I think it means maybe like your broken bread. Lechem is full bread. Pitech is like broken bread. When you break your bread, b'chometz, dip it in vinegar. Vatesha mitzara kotsim, you can sit here by the people. Vayitzpat la kali, and they, I will tell them." To give you some some grain for as food, vatochal and she ate vatisba vatosar. She had enough to eat and she was satiated and there was even leftover. Vatakam lelake. She got up and she started collecting. Vayitzaboazis na arabli more. And he tells them, gam bein haamarim tilake below tachli muha. Let her walk around and collect between the bundles of wheat. I, I don't know for sure what he's saying, but I have a feeling what he's saying is meaning, like we said, leket is a very specific amount that the poor person's allowed to collect. And I think he's saying to them, like, you can let her take even more than maybe what's rightfully hers. Bein ha'amarim, among the bundles. I think maybe that's what he's saying. Vigam shol tasholu la minatsvasim. He says, you should also, on purpose, forget some extra, uh, some extra b- bundles. Va'azavtem, leave them. Velikta and let her collect it. So play dumb, so to speak. Like, you know, pretend like you're leaving, meaning you should leave more than you really normally would leave and pretend like it's happening just on its own, but really you're doing it on purpose. Velo tiga ruba. And don't, don't rebuke her. Don't, don't get mad at her for, for, for taking more than that. Last pasuk. Vatalake pasodeh. She collects in the field. Ad of the entire day until evening. Vatach bot. And she beats the, um, the barley. Esa shirli keta. 
meaning to take the actual kernels and turn them into flour. She comes home with an eifa seorim, which is a very large, a large amount, right? An eifa, just to close, um, she comes home with, with all this food. So um, the Torah says the, the man that the Jewish people got in the Midbar, it says that the man they gathered was in Omer. They gathered enough man for each day's worth of food. And the, the man was one tenth of an eifa. So an eifa, if, if the man was one day's worth of food, the eifa is 10 times that. So it's 10 times. So she got enough food for 10 days for one person or for her and Naomi, it would have been five days worth of food. So that was a lot of food and Naomi's gonna say then, how did this happen? And then she's gonna be, again, at this point, presumably from Naomi's lens, right? If you like, kind of like switch the, you know, the scene over to Naomi's point of view, she doesn't know that presumably that Boaz, that, that, that uh, Rus has even been there. She doesn't know anything about Boaz yet. So we'll kind of pick up from there next week in Pasekiud. Ches. Beautiful. From the food service. <laughs>